This is Coom Cassius for Eiffel TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're in a random car park here, aren't we? Yeah, there's nothing really to uh, go and have a coffee or anything like that is around here. No, so I don't know if we're allowed to film here, but we'll just make it work until they come. Do what we want, though, don't we, Coom? That's right, that's right. Uh, Jamie Robinson, uh, a.k.a. Ginger Rocket. You still Ginger Rocket? Yeah, that's the one, man. Yeah, Never you change. Are. Absolutely. Unless you, it's ginger nut, you know what I mean? Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Where, who gave you that name? Um, years ago, I boxed uh, a kid called Brett Sykes, and after the fight, he was like, you can't miss a right hand, and one of my mates choked him, and I, like, um, I was like, oh, your right hand's like a rocket type thing, so my mate laughed about it and said, oh, it's a ginger rocket, and then from every, uh, then it's always been a rocket man, or ginger rocket. Not, not like enough people actually ask about where nicknames come from, because there is a moment, like you just said yeah. there, there's always a moment that it originates from, so that's that's your one. That's my one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, back out in action, 11th of Feb at York Hall on the, the MTK show, so your fight date's there, but the opponent is yet to be announced. Yeah, just waiting for the announcement of the opponent. I've been told it was a southern area title. Uh, we tried making an English title happen um, because we had Dolan Smith was vacating it. Um, so that all the applications and stuff like that, they all need to go through and stuff like that. And it just it had just been too soon for that to happen on that bill. Um, and then the southern area was Billy, who Billy Allerton was holding. He didn't want to fight me. We offered him more money than what it was for a good title fight. He turned it down. Just seems it seems to don't want to fight um, after we had a draw back in last year. I think he got lucky with a draw. Uh, on one of my worst performances, so um, we tried to correct her wrong, and they don't want the fight. They keep swerving me. He's blocked me on all the Instagram and social medias and stuff like. He don't want nothing. Why have you been blocked? Me. I put some stupid thing up, so I retaliated a little thing, and next thing you know, he's blocked me. He's blocked all my mates and everything like that. So yeah, he don't want nothing to do with me at all. That kid, but um, yeah, he's vacated the title now. Obviously, he's swerving me. We want the title, so he's vacated it, giving it up. Um, speaks a lot in itself. Um, and now I think it's going to, they're making a deal for Connor Vine, or Vane, whatever you say his name, the army boy. Um, hopefully that comes off. I've been asked to make it happen for the February the 11th, but I think that's one in the pipeline. If not, I've been told by MTK it's going to be a good fight on the 11th of February, so I've been active, I've been staying in the gym all, all the time through the lockdown and everything like that. Uh, my last fight was here in, in November. I boxed a good, good, uh, good Russian, uh, Vasim. Um, who lit, who that Liam Taylor and uh, Darren Tetley have previously boxed. And um, yeah, I've, I've put a good performance in there. And um, I'm looking forward to the element of February to put in another good performance. Yeah, as I've been told, there's a couple of changes being made to that show, which can't obviously say on camera, but it, very interesting changes for some of the guys on there, opponent wise. I think that's going to be a very good show, obviously, headlined by uh, Danny Dignam and Grant Dennis, which is a yeah. good fight. But there's, uh, yeah, there's a couple of. Good local, good, good, local good yeah. Like, I think when when people see I what see these Dennis changes are, they're like the other it. Weekend, like, he put good performance in over at the Circus Tavern. To be fair, to yeah. Him. yeah, he boxed well. So Danny digging on me always turns up and puts a good performance in anyway. So, so should be decent. I remember in our last interview, you obviously, you know, you spoke about <laughs> not, not your frustrations, but you know, your kind of attitude is that you know, just get me in with any of them because you'll fight any of them, and that, yeah, that's yeah. always been your attitude, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Like, I just want anybody now who's going to move me forward to a British title. Obviously, Sam Maxwell, I'd love the fight to happen with Maxwell, but obviously I'm still a couple of uh, fights away um, from that fight, where obviously you have to move into positions and stuff like that. But I think him and me would gel nicely into a fight, but like I say, you have to move into positions to make yourself uh, accountable for, for them fights. Um, another one would be uh, me and Tom Farrell. Like, he, he comes and has a dust up that kid. Like, I'd love to have a scrap with him. Like. I ain't calling people out, I'm just picking people who are generally have to turn up and have a dust up with me, so that's a good fight. Um, and I think now apart from that, like anybody in the top 20, just so I can move forward and uh, move in the direction where I want to be, and that's the British champion. So, yeah, is that, that, is that kind of the, the yeah, first goal on, yeah, on the step? When I was 13, me and my pal was walking down the, um, yeah, down the cycle track, yeah. he ended up getting uh, killed in Beckton back in 2006. Uh, Tommy Jones, and uh, he made me made a promise when I was 13 years old that I'd one day become British champion. So I've always stayed by that promise, and if it weren't for that promise, I probably wouldn't be boxing now. So he's always kept me in, in there, and I feel I feel grateful that um, that obviously I made that promise because it's always kept me on the straight and narrow, away from trouble and stuff like that. So yeah, no, I've, um, that's that's always been my uh, dream, and 
and stuff like that. And obviously Harlow's never had a British champion, nor has Paul, but Paul's over where I represent and where I first started my pro career and they turned up and they used to, like, used to sell out like arenas and stuff like that. It used to be decent. Um, big massive ticket seller up north as well. Um, so yeah, I, I owe it to a lot of people up there and I owe it to Harlow as well to be Harlow's first. Yeah. That's my aim, yeah. Is that how you kind of see your, your life kind of in time with boxing that without boxing that it could have gone a, a completely different way for you? Yeah, I look at my other mates and like where I'm from and the way I was brought up is either even in a jail or in a graveyard, you know what I mean? It's one of them and a nice place. So there's uh, not a lot around the town going for itself. There's a couple of people who do all right for themselves, but majority of them where I'm from, I'm from a council estate. I've never had an anchor going for me in my life and that. So yeah, boxing's my only way in life and I'm quite fortunate that I've got it. I know it's a, not an old cliche, but there is obviously a lot of stories around that centre around what you're talking about in, in relation to boxers kind of being elsewhere, wherever that could be. You know, you mentioned either being in a grave or being in a jail cell, but it's so true in, in a lot of yeah, circumstances that is. without that purpose and without that kind of focus on a, a sport you that you love. you money somewhere, ain't you? You've got to earn your money somewhere. And obviously boxing's took me on the track and now I do like personal training and like one-to-one -one boxing coaching. So. Um, to be fair, it's opened up other, even more doors and stuff like that. So, and I'm able to provide for my family as well now. I've got a little girl, I've got another little boy on the way in April. So, um, congratulations! Yeah, I'm just, just, just mainly focused on my family and providing for my family and becoming British champion. All, in, all that's basically all I want out of my life. And once I become a British champion, there's no one else done it around my area. Sort of like a bit of like not a chip on your shoulder, but saying like to be proud of and and saying to be able to open up a gym and be like, yeah, he's a British champion, like, let's go and train with him type yeah. thing. So, yeah, some good trainers as well around him. He's obviously you've got Ben Davison and all that. You ain't going to match with him, oh, yeah, he's, he's up there with the big boys, isn't he? But um, you've got, like, Jamie Cavanaugh, the Irish kid. Yeah. He was very good. He's in a local gym down there, so, and he's doing all right for himself as well. So it'd be nice to open up my own gym in, in the future and uh, do what they're doing, them boys. Well, it looks like you've got it mapped out. Well, listen, I uh, appreciate your time, Jamie. Like I said, we'll, we'll have another catch-up nearer to uh, Feb 11th. Obviously, by then, obviously, yeah. your opponent will be well and truly uh, done and dusted. So, yeah, and we'll look no, forward. It's not that, that far away, four weeks away. Yeah, can't wait, man. You got anything else you'd like to add, mate? Uh, no, i just just like to move into the top 20 and become British champion before I'm too old. Like, I know I've got a good five years left in me, so I'm like, fine, I am. I seem to be getting better and better each time I've boxed, so... Yeah, I just want to get cracking now and uh, make them fights happen. No problem. Cheers, um, sorry, I've obviously realised a couple of minutes ago that the sun is banging your eyes. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but appreciate your time and we'll definitely catch up ahead of Feb 11. Yeah, top man. Nice top man. Good.